Um, and that's great. Hi, Angel. <laughs> We're here. And uh, this is Live from the Heartland, the Christmas Eve edition, where we uh, find whoever is uh, available to uh, talk to us without um, interrupting some kind of frenzied shopping thing. Um, and I'm really, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have uh, a young candidate, um, which we need more of out there. A, young a tall guy, too. And a tall guy, yeah. Makes I, me sit up straight. That's, that's good. Will Gazzardi is running for Illinois State Rep in the 39th District on Chicago's northwest side. He is challenging Tony Berrios in the Democratic primary on March 20th. This is the latest in a series of candidates that we're having on our show. We'll have more in January and February as usual to up the participation of you voters out there in what uh, sometimes uh, gets passed off as somebody else's job voting in primaries. Well, Welcome to Live from the Heartland. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, is this your first foray into electoral politics? It is, yes. This is my first run for office. Well, congratulations. Thank you. It's very, very exciting. Yeah. Um, now, I think in this same um, race, there was a pretty close contest a couple of years ago, right? That's right. So there hasn't been a Democratic primary challenge for my opponent since 2004, a man named Pedro de Jesus ran then. But in in the last two election cycles, there's been a Green Party candidate right. uh, by the name of Jeremy Carpin. Right, Jeremy Carpin. That's right, yeah. And uh, in the last cycle, in 2010, he put up a really admirable showing. He had an incredible grassroots movement in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was a very exciting race. It was. For, for all the folks who are, you know, uh, basically always arrive at the conclusion that there should be a third party, mm -hmm. um, given that um, sometimes the two regular parties look a little too regular and like Absolutely. each other. Uh, speaking of that, the, your opponent is uh, the daughter of a longtime regular Democratic machine guy, Mr. B uh, Joe Barrios. Joe Barrios, right. yeah. He's actually the he is, head of the Democratic Party in town. That's right, he exactly. is. That's yeah. your Democratic Party, Michael. Well, you know, I I I, I march around to different uh, leaders at different times, but I do uh, I did make a choice to try to work within the progressive Democrats up here in the 49th ward. Absolutely. And I think that's an important role to play, given the reality of the Democratic domination of the city's politics. So we'll, we'll see what kind of openings that brings us. I think that so too. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think it's really important for us to remind the Democratic Party of the values that it's supposed to be upholding, that it's supposed to be the party that works for working people, that works for our families, that works to improve the conditions in our neighborhoods. And I think too often the party sort of strays from that. And that's why I think these primary races are so important, because it gives us an opportunity to revitalize the progressive values of the Democratic Party. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just off the top of my head, it was Bill Clinton who kind of moved it to the center. Uh, more than some other people and while he's certainly done some good things and the Democrats do some good things they do often uh, mirror the Republicans in many ways and uh, I grew up in a time when uh, you know I think of the Democratic Party as the people who fought for civil rights the people who fought uh, for more labor rights uh, you know took a stand on a lot of things Absolutely. and I think that uh, until the, the structure of electoral politics has changed, we need to work within that framework in some way. Let's learn something about Will Gazzardi. Will Let me say first that Will is another guy who contacted me, uh, and he we have friends in common. And you actually know them too, Katie. It's oh, goody. Can I play? It's coast. <laughs> and uh, how, do we, how do we actually link up? How are we connected here? So a friend of mine from college, uh, I, when, I, when I first decided that I was going to run for office, I sent out an email to everybody who I ever met saying, hey, I'm doing this exciting thing, and uh, if you know anybody who I might should be in touch with, please put us in contact. And my friend Jessica wrote me back and said, well, I know these incredible people from Carmel Highlands in the West Coast. and, and uh, and they're running this great place called the Heartland Cafe. And of course, I knew all about the Heartland and I'd been here many times. Uh, so I, I emailed you right away and, uh, and it was the start of a beautiful friendship. And we played a bunch of tag and then you showed up here the other day to meet with some people and uh, there you were sitting right there and I got introduced to you by these other friends of ours. And uh, here you are on the radio. And thank you so much for coming it's on. It's a pleasure to be here, absolutely. 
Okay, I'm going to go back to my question, which is, <laughs> let's learn about you, Will Gazzardi. Yeah. What, uh, what brought you to run, meaning what were you doing before, mm -hmm. and um, what is it you'd like to um, see happen if you win? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, before this, I was a reporter. I was a journalist working for the Huffington Post here in Chicago. Uh, and the Huffington Post has a local page. There were two of us when I got hired, eventually three of us working on staff. So we covered all manner of issues, everything Chicago, city politics, schools policy, local news, crime, sports, everything. And at first when I started working there, it was just, I was sort of immersed. I was writing and reading and analyzing, you know, 50 hours a week, local news all the time. Fun. And it was great, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. And after a little while, I realized that I needed to sort of pick my beat, you know, the areas that I really wanted to focus because on. Because you couldn't cover the universe? <laughs> because try though I did, I could not <laughs> cover the whole universe. Uh -huh. So one of the areas that I ended up focusing my coverage on was community organizations, neighborhood groups, in particularly in my neighborhood of Logan Square, right. uh, and also all around the city, that were working to make the city a better place to live, and that sort of didn't have the exposure they deserved. So I wanted to use the platform of Huffington Post to give them shine a little light on the great work that they were doing. Mm -hmm. And you know, eventually, after I wrote a number of these stories, they all started sounding the same. Where all of the neighborhood leaders who I was talking to, the leaders of these organizations, were saying, "Hey, we're struggling out here." You know, we're trying to help the most vulnerable people in our community, and every year we get budget cut after budget cut after budget cut from the state level. We have to cut programs, we have to cut staff, and I don't know how much longer we can keep doing the work we're doing. And it was really after hearing that story enough times that I realized that something needed to be done, that these neighborhood groups needed an advocate at the state level who was gonna fight for them. And, and I think that the families in our community feel the exact same way, that we're struggling, times are difficult, and that state government is increasingly passing the burden on to us, right. uh, that the corruption and the pay-to-play politics leads to our politicians lining their own pockets, and then the burden gets passed on to our families. And, mm -hmm. and we feel as if we need an advocate down there in Springfield, who's going to stand up for us? Have you uh, visited Springfield? I have. Yeah, I've been there a few times. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Did you meet anybody you liked? <laughs> As my grandmother would say after we came home from a night out, did you meet anybody you liked better than yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I met I met a few wonderful people down in Springfield. Um, I think that there are. Uh, there are a handful of great state reps down there, state legislators who are, who are doing really great work for their communities. And one of the things, you asked also, what am I hoping to accomplish when right. I get down there? And there are a lot of policy issues that I, that I hope we can get into. But one of the really important parts about this race for me is joining a growing progressive movement in this city and across the state. That there's a really exciting moment right now in politics, particularly here in Chicago, where a number of real progressives are being elected and coming into office and, and standing up for progressive values. And I give, think give a couple of examples of real well, progressives being elected. Sure. I think here in the city, uh, on the city council there have been a few great progressives who've won in the last couple of cycles. I mean uh, Alderman Wagasback has uh, has been a, a great progressive Alderman Arena, Alderman Pawar who were elected recently are independent leaders right. on the council. Uh, you guys have had a progressive alderman up here for, for quite some time. Yes, but, uh, yes. Uh, Joe Moore and following, following in the footsteps of David Orr, who was the first independent Democrat elected in 49th Ward. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and, and we um, did have John Arena on this show, and we did have Amor... Uh, uh, Amaya Pawar. Amaya Pawar right. on the show as well. Uh, um, we're excited about those yeah, elections. Yeah, it's um, and, and around the city, this this change is coming, and I think we have an opportunity. What you're seeing in the council now is that progressives are sort of reaching a critical mass where mm -hmm. they can actually influence legislation here and there. Unfortunately, uh, it's not. We're not there yet, you know. Right. Uh, the city council has a long way to go, but um, but there's great leaders there, and there are great leaders in Springfield as well. And I, so I look forward to going down there, joining with the great leaders who are already there, working together with the newly elected progressives, and forming a real coalition who can actually influence policy and push things towards the progressive side. You, you know, of course, the state is broke, right? <laughs> so so I keep hearing. You know, yeah. so somehow we found 300 million dollars for Sears and CME. Yeah. Uh, that was. 
that was a surprise from a broke state. A surprise. That's not the word I would use, but okay, <laughs> we're on the